relative frequency, or in other words, probability from an experiment or experimental probability. Um, I'm going to describe this and explain this by doing a couple of examples. This is the first one. So an experiment was done to choose a card at random from a pack of cards that got colours on, and these was what happened. I'm guessing the cards were replaced before they were selected again. So um, we need to work out how many of each colour there is. So I'm going, to, I'm going to do a tally chart. So blue, yellow, yellow, green, red. Green, red, yellow, blue, blue, yellow, red, blue, blue, yellow. And the reason why I'm doing a tally chart because I did actually try and count this earlier and got it wrong. Blue, blue, green, red, yellow. So we should have 5, 10, 15, 20 things, yes. The one I did before, I only got 19 things. So, tally charts, if you go through the data systematically rather than trying to count all the blue ones, when they're spread out like this, it's quite difficult, quite easy to make a mistake, especially when I can't put my finger on it to count them. So, red there's four, blue there is seven, green there is three, and six are yellow. So, that's the frequency, but the relative frequency is relative to the number of trials you've done they've done 20 things so this is out of 20 now you don't have to cancel these down although these two you can cancel down probabilities you just have to have an equivalent value so um, relative frequency you must have it out of the total number of trials because that's the probability use the results to calculate how many times you would expect a blue card if 100 pupils chose a card at random so the blue card Currently, our best guess of the probability is 7 out of 20. So the 7 out of 20 choose a blue card. Then it'll be 14 out of 40, 21 out of 60, 8, 28 out of 80, 35 out of 100. Or we can just times by 100. And that would give us 700 over 20, uh, which would be 35. Okay. Now that's... Uh, doing an experimental way. Sometimes you're given the results in the form of a graph um, and so maybe the results are told on a graph like this so the probability after 10 trials, 10 spins is 0 0.6, after 20 spins it was calculated to be 0 0.45 then 0 0.5 and so on until you get to here. So using this we can answer questions about the probability. Um, using the graph to calculate the number of times that the spinner landed on the pink after the first 10 spins. So 10, 0 0.6 of the time it landed on pink. So 0 0.6 times 10 is 6 times. After the first 50 spins, 50 spins it's here which is 0 0.44 and we're going to times that by 50. So if we times by 100 we get 44 and then we half it we get 22. Okay so we can read values off the graph and use that to calculate the probability or how many times that happened by times and by the number of spins or we can just say what the probability is. Now which of these sets of data gives us the best or most accurate probability? Well with relative frequency it's a very important idea that you realize it doesn't matter which one looks better we always take the one with the most trials. This is the best experimental probability we've got. The more trials we do, the more times we do something, the more experiments we do, the better our probability gets. So we always take the highest value of spins or, or trials. So from the graph, estimate the probability of the spin landing on pink. So we use this value which is 0.4. So if we had multiple people doing experiments, we'd always pick the person that's done the most trials. That gives the most accurate results.